What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Chantal has done yet another podcast, doing her best faux Rogan. So we start off in the beginning with the echoing intros. I don't know why this is. I think she just had the loop doubled and everything was just, you know, in a chamber. She goes through the normal hellos. She's going through the singing. She laughs off the audio issues and says she'll have to fix it later. The chat actually brings up the views on the last video and the live count. And she says that's funny that they're worried about it more than she is. She then says she has a very important question. She kind of leads this a couple times and then ultimately asks how cute Julia is. She has a brand new vape today. She starts using it right away in less than six minutes in. She has to leave. She says she wants to do a more emojis, which honestly she said she wants to do for years. But the viewers, having been given all these gifts, are a little bit concerned that there isn't more to her memberships. She says she got another injection today and she's fine. And despite saying she won't be giving any more health updates, she continues to give health updates, saying that she wants to be 100% by the end of the month so they can go camping. But she still needs to lay down. However, she was able to sit just long enough today to do a hamio. She says Sala is in the other room being very quiet. She's craving fettuccine Alfredo, but wants a healthy option. She said she's just been eating the same food she's been telling us about. And she says she wants to alternate now each day, a gaming stream and then a podcast. She says today she found a case that she wants to discuss with us because she found it interesting, so everyone else should too. And she said she actually wanted to do a true crime and cook but didn't have the energy to cook. She offers she has notes and starts talking about a case from 1992. She says a doctor is involved that has a funny name. So every single time she says it, she mocks it. She says this happens in a small farm town called Kipling. It centers around a couple having an argument on Halloween. A woman named Candy was working at a local gas station when the argument occurred, and she left to seek salvation at the Kipling Hospital after the argument because a friend worked there. When she arrived... The nurses noticed how distraught she was and recommended she see a doctor before leaving. Dr. Schneeberger was the attending physician, and he had a very successful practice in the town. He also delivered Candy's child, so there was a bit of a rapport with him. Candy, however, was administered an injection that made her body go numb. She was unable to scream. She was kept overnight for observation, but she was keen enough to protect her undergarments in a bag fearing she had been assaulted and wanting to preserve evidence. The next morning, she approached Dr. Schneeberger, and he advised her that she must have had a vivid dream. Based on the injection he gave her, she must have been hallucinating. Candy took offense to this and presumed that he was trying to formulate a cover-up for his actions. She went home and told her parents what took place, and they drove her around two hours away so she could be tested for an assault. When confronted with this, the doctor gave his DNA voluntarily, and it did not match the test results that Candy had had done, but she remained steadfast in her recollection of the events and fought to keep the case open. Seven years later, another test was provided, this time under legal supervision, which also netted negative results. Now, with two negative DNA results, Candy continued her pursuit of justice, even if the judicial system was stepping back from the case. And she did this by hiring a private investigator. That investigator broke into the doctor's car and got chapstick, which actually did net a match to Candy's DNA tests. Now, this led to a third test being required, but this time the blood would be drawn from his finger and not his arm. The doctor declined this test, stating that he bruised easily. And during this blood draw, they determined that the blood that was taken was too degraded to have DNA sampled and did not seem fresh. Now, a short term after, the doctor's stepdaughter came forward, citing she had been injected with medicines as well and then feared she had been insulted. Now, that case actually resulted in a DNA test of the doctor's hair, saliva, and finger, which did come back to a DNA match, not only for assaulting Candy, but his stepdaughter as well. So obviously the question became, how were the first tests not matching if obviously someone would have consistent DNA? It was then found the doctor had placed an artificial vein in his arm filled with patient's blood and that he was simply using this to proclaim his innocence when he was being tested. Now, even after being caught, 
He still continued to say that he was innocent, and these were false allegations. He was, though, sentenced to six years and is actually free today. Now, with that said, that whole segment took Chantal about a half an hour. Here's what I will offer to Chantal and anyone watching, listening, whatever the case may be. Gaming and podcasts are very competitive, whether we're on this platform or another. You better bring something significant to your audience if you think that you're just going to be successful in those endeavors. This video is not going to do that for her because it's not well thought out and it's not put together well. People come in at all points of the stream. She constantly has to use wordplay to work around things because she's very concerned about losing monetization on a video. And she makes nonstop jokes about Dr. Schneeberger's name. Now, because she doesn't provide a time frame for this, like she didn't say, hey, I'm going to go live at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, it makes it a very disjointed listen because people come in, they ask questions, they're picking up halfway through, three quarters of the way through, and a lot of the people listening, which are her biggest supporters, got very tired of her laughing, of her mocking his name, and she just wrote this off as not being able to please everyone, that she found his name funny. She says, you know, some people do makeup while telling these stories. Other people eat food while telling these stories. It's only her that gets hated on. Chantal is unaware that a movie was made on this. She's amazed that he kept a tube of blood in his arm. She brings up people who abuse their power or authorities. She kind of turns this into other reaction channels and how some reactors have been, quote, scared off and how they, quote, can't handle it when others call them out. She ties this in to other criminals and how some things cannot be rehabilitated depending on the charges or the crime. And she said she doesn't plan on doing this type of content all the time. And she's concerned that people might mock her for doing this. Now, she says that's fine if people want to do that. But this is her trying something new and that she doesn't need to rely on, quote, gossiping about other people every day. He offers that she has a personality, and it doesn't always have to be about the same thing, or food or eating, for that matter. She says people watch her content because they like watching her eat, and she pushes back when people question whether it's feeder content. And she says at this point she's just over girl world drama. She transitions this into different types of punishment, international jail conditions, discusses the possibility of covering fashion just to show you how all over the place we are. She then dials back, you know, the talk about her private life by going over excitement for Ramadan, saying that she's going to try to read 30 pages of the Quran each day. And that's going to be her goal, to read the entire Quran during Ramadan. And she just needs a good schedule for this to happen. She says she's going to fast with Ramadan and will not seek medical exemptions because her diabetes, though while it would provide it, is actually benefited by fasting. She carries on about repairing her relationship with food and issues that she says restrictions continue to be the problem, that she has to forge this new healthy relationship, and that she says no matter what she does, online or offline, people are going to analyze it. She cites that people will count how many grains of rice or spoonfuls of oil she uses. Someone brings up the new Mr. Snowflake documentary, which the trailer has released, and she's very passive to this. She said she must be important if people keep making things about her life, but she just doesn't care. She writes this off as people, quote, just wanting clout, and that everyone spins her story in their own way. She says she knows more of her life than anyone, so why would she bother watching those things? She states that nobody has a life if they continue to talk about her. And a couple people in the chat mentioned that they're still blocked or they have a different username that's blocked. And she responds that her block list is very long and she needs a specific channel to be able to unblock them. She said she watched some game tutorials and she's going to try to play more games on Wednesday, but also just wants it to kind of be a hangout. They give her some diet advice and she claims she really still needs to work on the first step, but obviously things like fasting aren't the answer. The chat asks her, you know, why are you talking about diet? Why are you talking about your health? Not only did you say you wouldn't do it, but this is all kind of the same repetitive thing. And 
She kind of just glances over this, saying her sciatica is getting better, and she's going to show herself soon. She says without mukbangs, she's just been eating wasala every night, which she enjoys. But she does say she can't cross her legs due to her size, and that's why she has the mukbang set up. This prevents her from going in and properly kind of sitting down and having a former meal. At that point, someone brings up how is she eating wasala if the kitchen chairs are so small, and she says the legs are made of metal, so they won't bend. She talks about doing more walking challenges, citing that once she gets better, she's going to re-injure herself by walking, and she kind of laughs this off, but to be honest, is that probably not more true than any of us care to believe? She then, of course, goes on to talk about reaction channels, that no one cares about the reactor, they only care about Chantal, you don't listen to me for me, you listen to me for her, but you listen to her for everything else, not for her. It, it's very comical the way she kind of views the lens of that, of, you know, she can talk about whatever she wants, and it's because she's this endearing and well-spoken individual, but everyone else in the community that speaks, they don't get that same treatment they only get listened to because they're talking about Chantal which honestly leads to a whole different conversation of could you not enter the space and simply talk about Chantal and be successful because we've seen some channels just come in and really not be able to thrive and in fact Chantal brings that up she talks about Kaya multiple times during this which I don't understand why if you're gonna watch Kaya then you've probably made up your mind to watch Kaya if you've Watch Chantal, you've probably made up your mind to watch Chantal. So why she plays the same back and forth other than for drama, I really don't know. She closes out by asking if anyone reacted to her gaming stream like she doesn't know, citing that she doesn't know what people expected from her. It was her first time playing the game. The chat just kind of tries to be as supportive as they can, asking her, you know, can she get poutine there? When she travels, does she worry about leaving the animals? Where does she want to go? What foods does she want to eat when she gets there? And then, of course, they close this out by asking her if she still supports Palestine. And she says that she does, even though she was taken off TikTok, apparently, for sharing those thoughts. And she threatens, of course, to be back tomorrow with this same caliber of content. So I guess all things being equal, if this is what you're interested in, if you want to follow true crime, then I would offer there's tons of channels out there that would suit your needs as a viewer much better from a visual standpoint, from an audio standpoint, from a just respect for the case standpoint. I don't watch a whole lot of true crime, but I do know the true crime that I have watched is often done very tastefully, very respectfully, because at the end of the day, there are true victims involved. And to have Chantal kind of laugh and mock the predator in this story the entire time is just a bit strange. And I, I think it speaks to what I came back in the beginning and said. She is looking to transition from being a mukbanger, eating on camera, to going into very competitive spaces, gaming and podcasts. And she just, in my opinion, does not have the ability to captivate an audience long enough to have them sit through one of these videos. And to that point, it's really not even a video as much as it is just a live stream, which is very disjointed to watch on the playback. I've told Chantal, and I will offer again, what you need to do is what you cannot do. Sit down with a microphone, 13 minutes, 50 seconds. Don't rely on your chat. Don't rely on pauses. Simply talk about what your topic is. You do not have the capacity to do that. You must use the chat as a crutch to carry you. You need their input. You need their questions. You need their suggestions. You can't do this on your own. And if you can, I would love to see your average view time. That is why these things will not be successful. No one is going to go watch disjointed 90-minute gameplay when they can go watch someone that actually knows what they're doing in the game, walk through it and enjoy it without questioning it or relying on the chat. 
No one is going to watch 90 minutes of someone going over a true crime story when they don't really know what's happened and they make a joke out of the characters involved in the story when they can go watch a formally put together movie or, I'm sure, higher quality telling of the story somewhere else. But the fact that Chantal is apparently dependent on the Beezers accepting anything she wants to do and have it be successful, then that, to me, tells us all we need to know about where this channel is going to go and the direction it's going to take. Now, a couple of you did bring up in the chat, and I just want to serve to correct something here, because a lot of people came to me and said yesterday in her gaming stream, she said that she got $50 for doing nothing and asked me why I did not make a bigger deal of this. The reason I didn't make a deal of that at all is because if you go back, you actually watch what took place. She was discussing the character in the game gets paid in-game currency for going through the tasks. She had failed the task. The character, however, was paid $50 for attempting it. So she wasn't saying someone paid her $50 online to sit there and do nothing. She was saying, why did my character get paid? I didn't do anything. But again, that speaks to the unfamiliarity with the game. If you've made it this far in the video, comment $50 so I know that you made it this far. I appreciate you guys going through all your favorite serials, going through all my timestamps. It's fun to see all of those things. And then the people that don't get that far kind of ask why people are saying, what's your favorite serial? Why did you say Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Why did you say 21? I'm sure someone will say, why are you saying $50? I am going to leave you with the top comments from the last video. You know I appreciate you watching this video, and I will be back as soon as I can with more content.